Yo, what's up, fan base? It's your boy Blaze Hollow coming at you with a new what if. This time I bring you what if Deku had a devil fruit. But before all that, I have an important announcement to bring up to all of you. First part of the announcement is that I'm very sorry to all of you having to wait for new videos, but I've just been so busy with my family, so I haven't had time to record. But that brings me into my second announcement, which is that I actually have some other scripts that are actually already done, which is all for one part 15 and part three of Espada. So be looking forward to that, and let's get into that intro and get this started. Do you ever wonder what would happen to yourself if you woke up one morning to a completely different person? Doing things that most people would probably frown upon or just wouldn't understand why you're doing it. Well, I created a story exactly about that topic, so boys and girls, trust me, things are going to get weird, but I'm hoping that people who are going through this exact change will actually understand and respect the story. The day started off just like any ordinary day for Izuku, who was playing at the park with some kids until he ended up getting bullied by his childhood friend Bakugo, who was letting out small explosions from his while his two goons were just standing there behind him. Come on, Deku, isn't your aunt a pro hero? Shouldn't you have some kind of special power or some training to make me stop doing what I'm doing to you? Deku just held his head down in shame, knowing that he was quirkless. You know better than anybody, Kachan, that I don't have a quirk, and it doesn't even matter that my aunt is a pro hero. She's too busy to sometimes help me out. Akugo just smiled as he actually walked over to Izuku and just pushed him down towards one of the nearby trees. That's right, you're worthless, and your family would probably be better off without you. Izuku was trying his best to hold back the tears from all the harsh words and being manhandled. That's not true, I can be a hero and when my quirk manifests I'll just show you, Kachan. Akugo got annoyed as he let off a small explosion which actually shook the tree that they were under which made actually a weird fruit fall right next to them which had a lot of black markings on it which also then encouraged Bakugo to go pick it up with a smirk on his face he then turned to Izuku. How about I make a deal with you, Deku? If you can eat this entire fruit without spilling a drop of it. I won't mess with you for the rest of the day, but if you throw up, I'm going to beat you black and blue. Izuku was shaking because he actually didn't know what kind of fruit that was. For all he knew, it could be poisonous. And if I refuse, Kachan? Bakugo had an angry look on his face as he just looked like he heard the stupidest question ever. You're acting like I'm giving you a choice. Either eat the fruit or I'm going to throw it down your throat by force. Izuku's hands were trembling as he just looked at the fruit and then looked over at everybody, realizing that there was no way for him to get out of this. As he took a bite of the fruit, he realized that it was the worst tasting thing in the world as he wanted to throw up, but he held it back knowing that he threw up, he was going to get beat up. It took him about two minutes to finish the entire fruit, which just made him feel depressed as soon as he was done. There, I did it. Now can I please go home? I want to be left alone. Bakugo was mad. He was hoping that the fruit was going to actually make Izuku sick or throw up. The fact that nothing happened actually just irritated him more. Did you honestly think I wasn't going to beat the crap out of you? First, you were supposed to make a spectacle out of throwing up, but then instead you just made everything so lame by doing nothing. After about 15 minutes of getting beat up, the bullies just left as he stumbled home feeling sick to his stomach and in a lot of pain. As he finally arrived home, his mom was very concerned as he saw him all dirty and hurt. Oh sweetie, what happened? Were you getting bullied on the playground again? That's when a woman's voice could be heard actually coming from the living room as she turned the corner revealing herself to be Midnight who was very concerned and got down on her knees hugging Izuku. Oh, you precious child, who did this to you? Was it Bakugo? Izuku was trying to separate the two of them for a minute so she can actually look over Izuku's injuries. Is it nice to assume that Baku was always the cause of the problem? Maybe he just got hurt at the park or ran into somebody else. Midnight had a little bit of a scowl on her face, realizing that her sister was always trying to see the good in people a little bit too much. The only reason you're saying that is because Baku was the son of your best friend. He then turned to look Izuku dead in the eyes. Now tell us just who did this to you. Nobody's in trouble yet, but I just want to know because we're both concerned for you. Izuku was a little bit nervous to say because he didn't want his aunt to get upset but also didn't want to lie so he decided to tell them everything. It was Bakugo and his friends. I thought we were going to get to play together but instead I was turned into their punching bag. He also made me eat this weird fruit that made me feel sick to my stomach. While they were having this conversation they came more into the house as they sat down in the living room. Midnight was actually tapping her foot on the floor concerned for her nephew with her rage being hidden. While watching Inko get some fresh clothes for Izuku while bandaging him up and then proceeding to give him some 
some medicine for his stomach. Don't completely agree with his behavior, but sometimes you just gotta say boys will be boys. I'll talk to Minsky later about all this. Midnight got onto her feet trying to compose herself, but you could definitely tell she was angry about all this. This is the 12th time you told me that and nothing has changed. Maybe I should actually be the one to talk to her and maybe I can actually get my point across. Minko had a grim look on her face as you remember the last time her sister tried to handle a situation like this. As much as I appreciate your concern, I'd rather take control of this, especially since she's my best friend. Midnight realized that she was getting nowhere with her sister as she then looked over at Izuku, wondering what he was thinking. Can you please explain to me why you keep on trying to hang out with this boy? He causes you nothing but trouble, yet you keep on going back to him like a lovesick puppy. Izuku was blushing a little bit while he was also getting flustered. I just like hanging out with him, nothing else. Minko was smiling, knowing that her son was trying to make an effort to get friends, but was a little bit worried about how he was approaching it. Just remember, don't do anything crazy or let other people push you around because love and peace will always win in the end. A few years have passed as it's the day before Valentine's Day and Izuku was in his second year of middle school as he was cooking chocolates in the kitchen while following a very complicated recipe as Aunt Midnight walked into the kitchen smiling from smelling the chocolate. Oh, I see, you're making chocolates. Are you planning to give them to a sweet girl? Even though back when I was in school, it was the other way around where girls would be giving guys chocolate. Izuku was blushing as he was trying to keep his focus on what he was doing. But what if I told you I wasn't making these for a girl? What would you think of me then? And I thought about that for a minute, then realized what was going on as she smiled and hugged Izuku from behind. Oh, are you finally going to announce your feelings to the boy that you've been dealing with ever since you were young? Izuku's face turned completely red as he was losing his composure. I just feel like it's finally time that I take a chance. I've known Bakugo since we were young, so I'm hoping that he's going to return my feelings. Midnight let go as she took a few steps back, having a worried look on her face as she realized that there was a big chance that Izuku was going to get rejected. I just hope for the best for you and just know no matter what happens, I will always be by your side and in your corner. Izuku smiled as he started to pour out the chocolate mix onto a pan and then shape it. I truly do appreciate it, but my heart is telling me that this will work out perfectly. Midnight decided to leave the kitchen. As she stepped out, she noticed that her sister was standing out in the hall from the kitchen as she looked like she didn't know what she wanted to do with herself. Looking almost completely conflicted as she then walked over to her sister, tapping her on the shoulder, snapping her out of her thoughts. A bottle of champagne for your thoughts. Minko automatically snapped out of it as she then looked over at her sister. I just don't know how to feel about his choices. We live in a time where people might frown upon his thoughts and feelings towards Bakugo. I just don't want to see my little boy get hurt. Midnight just leaned on the wall that she was next to as she had a playful look on her face. But that is what love is all about, following your heart and expressing yourself in a way that you want and not caring about society or what other people think. Besides, he's not hurting anybody. Ko just looked at her sister with a very serious look on her face. Not worried about him hurting anybody. I'm worried about people hurting him. You know that kids will usually make fun of anybody that is different, even by a little bit. It's bad enough that he already has a weak quirk. Midnight had a very sour look on her face. Just because the only thing that he can do with his quirk is extend his nails does not mean it's weak. Just get proper support items and you can make anything something like that even powerful. Plus, you know that he's a smart kid. I think you're looking too much at the negatives of this world. Maybe you need to start looking a little bit at the positives. Go had a blank expression on her face as she walked past her sister. One of us has to be realistic, even if it is hurtful. Time skip to Valentine's Day. Izuku brought his homemade chocolates for Baku as he had them hidden within his bag while he was waiting for the right moment to give it to him. But during lunch, most of the girls have already given out their chocolates to everybody in class that they love. That's when Izuku decided that it's now or never. Hey, Kachan, there is something that I would like to ask you. Bakugo just looked annoyed at Izuku. Do you want Deku? Can't you see that I'm in the middle of something? Izuku just started to hesitate as he was stuttering. Well, um, I, if it is possible, I would like it if we can go somewhere else to talk about this. Bakugo just got even more irritated. You got something to say, just say it and get it over with. Izuku just started to blush very heavily. Just here, as he handed Kachan a couple of chocolates that he made himself. I made these for you and I was just thinking as he started to mutter to himself. Akugo was just looking at this entire situation confused. What is this for? A random student in the class starts to announce the events that are going on as he tries to get the attention of all the other students while making an annoying voice. Hey look guys, I think that Izuku is trying to confess to Bakugo. The rest of the class just started to laugh at Izuku while Katsuki was trying to defuse the situation. While the rest of the class began to get louder, Izuku decided to take in a deep breath and shout out while he was under peer pressure and not thinking straight. Achan, I love you. Those four words made the entire class go 
quiet. Even the teacher that was walking in actually the very moment stayed quiet due to the shock. As the silence grew longer, the more awkward it became, but Bakugo decided to grab Izuku and drag him out of class and onto the roof. In what seemed to be about 15 minutes, Bakugo returned to the classroom with his uniform having a little bit of blood stains while his face showed a very pissed off expression that no one wanted to deal with. While they were all just sitting there staring at Bakugo wondering what happened to Izuku. What are all you extra staring at? Back with Izuku, he was left on the roof of the school building, battered and bruised as he was just trying to stop his nose from bleeding out. Izuku was just sobbing as his whole soul felt like it was breaking apart. Why? Why? Why was I born like this? What was wrong with me for having feelings for Kachan? Did he really mean what he said? He's probably right. I'm just some freak of nature. People would probably be better off without me. Zuku curled himself into a ball as he cried, thinking about the terrible things that Kachan told him and trying to figure out a solution to his predicament. But the door to the school roof opened only to reveal the school nurse with a first aid kit. Once the nurse patched up Izuku, she told him to follow her to the infirmary so they can talk about what happened here. After after about 20 minutes, Izuku was in the principal's office along with his aunt Midnight and Minsky who were both shocked to see Izuku's condition. Both of them wanted to ask what happened but the principal spoke up first making sure to give them all the information that he was able to get which infuriated Midnight. And it took everything within her well-being to not crack her whip around Bakugo's neck. And I'm sure you're taking the necessary precaution to expel Bakugo for his actions. My nephew was just trying to express his feelings and he got beaten bloody for it. The principal was actually rubbing his forehead with a handkerchief for a little bit, worried about what he was about to say, but knew he had to say it. Sorry to say, but no actions have actually been taken. The staff are still deciding what we should do. The worst that could possibly happen is that he gets a few weeks of detention because we feel that expulsion is a little bit too extreme. Midnight slams her hands down on the desk in rage. Necessary. If my nephew would have actually been the one to beat Bakugo bloody, you would have sent him to a juvenile detention center. But since he seems to be this school's actual pride and joy, you give him special treatment so unless you're going to actually take action I'm going to have the police come down here and you know what I'm going to expose everything about this school. Minsky didn't know exactly how to feel about the situation. On one hand she felt really guilty for Izuku but on the other hand she really wanted to defend her son. I kind of do agree that expulsion is a little bit too extreme maybe we should just have Katsu take some anger management classes and have him write Izuku an apology letter. And I looked at the both of them baffled on how delusional they felt about this situation. Are you serious right now Minsky? of all people I would think that you would understand what it means to have affection for someone of the same gender since you and my sister seem to have some kind of fling back in the day. Minsky was blushing but also was offended at the same time. Don't know what kind of delusional fantasy you think that Inko and I had back in the day but we never would have done such a thing so it has nothing to do with the situation that we're having right now. Principal motion for both of the women to give their attention to him so they could stop bickering. I do not deny that this was unnecessary treatment for Izuku but he was doing something that could kind of be seen as weird for most people that could also see at the school as offensive. While I do not think that there should be any further action, I will allow you to take him home so he can get some mental help, but besides that, there is nothing else I will be doing today for you. Midnight was truly shocked on how poorly the school system were treating those who did not have the spotlight, but then she tried to keep her composure knowing that her nephew needed her to be strong for him. Do you know that I will make you regret the decision, but it is not the time or place for me to be doing that now? They both walked out of the school as Midnight put both her hands on Izuku's shoulder while he was mentally broken and bawling his eyes out. She then sat him down in her car as she then felt a hand on her shoulder. When she turned around, she closed the car door behind her as she saw that it was Minsky, which enraged her. You have a lot of nerve walking up to me right now, so unless you have something really important to say, you should walk away while you still can. Minsky was rubbing her arm, feeling a little bit uncomfortable and sorrowful for Izuku. Listen, I never wanted anything like this to happen, but I had to protect my son just as much as you want to protect Izuku. Izuku. Midnight just pushed Minsky away. It's like she almost didn't want to see her face ever again. It's not like that. It's allowing your son to do the things that he does. If you think that Izuku's life is the only one that he's ruined and messed up, you're wrong. I can send you piles of paperwork about other people who have trauma or self-doubt all because of Katsuki's action. And trust me, I will do everything within my power to make sure your son never becomes a hero because he doesn't deserve it. Minsky was blown back by those words and realized how true they actually could be, but she wanted to stand her ground and defend her son, so she denied all logic. 
you have no power over the hero community, so you can say all you want, but my son will be a great hero one day. And I don't see any proof of what you told me here. I only see one, and even though it's tragic, I cannot pity someone who lives in a mind of delusion against society. Midnight turned her back to Minsky as she got over to the driver's side car and sat down in the driver's seat, getting ready to almost drive away. It is not a delusion to show your feelings to someone that you love, but if it goes against society, then maybe society is the one that needs to change. After an hour of driving, Midnight took Izuku back to his mother. Once she actually opened the door, Izuku ran past her and went to his room and slammed and locked the door behind him, not wanting to be disturbed as Inko was sitting on the couch reading a book and then she just looked up at her sister with a little bit of a glare in her eye. So it looks like my prediction on reality was true. Do you feel happy now seeing that he is in full distraught? Midnight walked over to her sister and just smacked the book out of her hands almost like she wanted to strangle her. Is that what you're truly concerned about at the moment? The fact that you are right, not the fact that your son is literally heartbroken and distraught? Inko got up as she was actually very angry with her sister's actions. Do you truly want me to say I tried to warn you and I tried to help him but neither one of you wanted to listen to me no matter what? He then composed herself as she then walked over to one of the windows keeping her back to her sister. I can't keep on doing this. You seem to want to continue to help with this naive world that you're creating not only for yourself but for him so just take him and go. Midnight was shocked to hear Inko give up on her son and not only that but herself. Are you seriously trying to run away from all this now after everything that I've told you and been through? Inko turned to look at her sister with tears in her eyes and looking like she was ready to have a mental breakdown herself. Yes, I am truly tired. I've had to raise my son all by myself for so many years. I don't know where my husband ran off to and I had to deal with your eccentric personality. Now with it rubbing off on my son causing him to be now heartbroken, it's like how many more heartaches and challenges do I have to go through to get some happiness back into my own life again? Midnight was sad hearing how her sister truly thought about her own life. I understand that you feel beaten down and broken on the inside, but that doesn't mean that you should give up on your own flesh and blood. Ko snapped as she was getting ready to yell her lungs out at her sister. Why not? It seems like the both of you up and ignored everything that I've said. You don't care about my feelings just like my deadbeat husband didn't. So just leave and take him. I'm tired. I'm done with this. I want a fresh start where I don't have to think about any of this anymore. Midnight just hung her head down in defeat. Fine, I hope that you find the happiness that you're looking for while I'm out there trying to help your son find his happiness again. Inko just stayed silent while Midnight actually goes over to Izuku's room to see that he was passed out on his pillow that was drenched in his tears and a little bit of blood that leaked through the bandages on his face. Midnight just let out a little bit of a sigh as she picked him up gently and started walking towards the front door getting ready to leave only to look back one more time at her sister to give her one last chance. I'm going to give you one last chance to think about this. Once I leave, we will not be coming back. Well, at least I will be coming back to do the paperwork with you. Ko walks over and looks at her son and then thinks about herself as she reaches out to put her hand on his cheek but then pulls back before even touching him. I'm sure he needs you more than he needs me. I'm far too broken on my own mind and stuck in the past. He needs you because you're always looking forward. Please promise me that you'll always keep on trying to give him that hope that you keep on trying to preach to me about everything. And I just let a few tears drop down from her face. I promise he will be happy and whenever you find your happiness that you'll come back to us someday. Midnight leaves the small apartment hearing the door close behind her as she could also hear the tears and wails of her sister from behind the door. But she knew she needed to be strong as she walked her way down to the car laying Izuku down in the back seat and driving away. Only to arrive at a decent sized house that seemed to be separated between two different idealism for the front yard being between music and kittens. Midnight let out a little bit of a depressed sigh as she goes to knock on the front door leaving her nephew to be laid down in the back seat only for the door to be answered by Izawa who was surprised to see Midnight there. Hey, I wasn't expecting you to come over, but did something happen? Midnight was just holding onto her arms with a very tight grip trying to keep herself calm. Yeah, I need your help. Izawa looked past Midnight to see a very injured and seriously emotionally broken Izuku which put a serious look on his face. Bring him inside, I have a room that you could place him in so we can talk in private. After Midnight brought her nephew inside and placed him into the room, she goes to talk with Izawa who was actually talking with President Mike who was actually making coffee for the three of them. When she sat down on one of the stools next to the kitchen, she got both of their attention and told them everything that happened which made President Mike actually hold on to a handkerchief crying his eyes out while Izawa was actually flashing back to his own life. Izawa quickly composed himself as he took control of the situation. So now you need to find a place to stay among many other things so until you can actually find a proper place for yourself and him why don't you just stay here with Mike and I. President Mike was finally able to stop crying after hearing such a sad story. Yeah you should stay here so we can help you get Izuku's smile back. Midnight had a small smile on her face as she looked closely at her two closest friends. Thank you so much I really do appreciate the both of you. He cut over to the side room 
that Izuku was sleeping in as he finally woke up seeing that he was in a place he wasn't familiar with. As the words that he heard earlier today was still echoing in his head making him cry and scared for his own life. I feel like such a burden to those around me. If I can't be with the person I love and I've been with ever since I was young then I don't want to be around anymore. Izuku extended his fingernails to the point that they looked similar to a syringe or spike as he looked around the room that he was in one last time as he then plunged his five fingernails into his chest hoping to end his own life. As he said to himself that he was hoping in his next life that he'd be reborn as a girl just like the people around him told him he should have been. Something happened, he didn't feel any pain but his body felt like it was changing. As he opened his eyes he realized that his muscle mass had actually shrinking down to be a lot thinner and his hair has grown out halfway down his back. As he pulled out his fingers he realized that there was no puncture wound as he then went to go find a mirror that was in the room. He then realized he transformed into what he wished, a girl with a slender body with his clothes being all baggy. My god, oh my god, what have I done or what has happened to me? Tears just welled down her face, mixture of sorrow and happiness, not understanding what was happening right now. Have I truly become a girl? Is this god giving me a gift to restart? I need to go find my aunt and mother. Zuku rushed out of the room and down the hall to an organized living room slash kitchen to see his aunt along with two other people. T look, my desire is finally given form. I am truly no longer a freak. Zawa looked at the girl confused but then recognized the outfit. Oh my god. Didn't I looked over at Izuku concerned but also very happy. Amazing. Mike was emotionally conflicting, wanting some answers but didn't know how to ask them. Wait, what just happened? But that's where I'm going to leave it off this time guys. I hope that you actually like this story. I know it's going to hit a lot different than most of my other what ifs but I trying something new since there's actually been a lot of changes in my life but i will get into that on another time but with all that said i'm out this time guys bye